What is going on, everybody? It is Childish, and we are back at it again. It is Friday night, December 15th, and you guys are freaking out right now because you're like, where the heck did your hair go? Now, you would, I would use both hands right now, but I can't because uh, my shoulder is still bothering me. Don't you worry. I got a couple pain meds in me right now. I'm feeling real good. Either way, guys, I did want to take the time to go ahead and give you guys a quick recording. This is something that I don't normally do, but uh, I want to put it out there because I think this time around, this secret dungeon is pretty important. So, as you guys can see right now, we have the Fire Living Armor secret dungeon going on this weekend. Uh, we're going to be able to get uh, as many pieces as we can uh, in the next uh, 72 hours so that we can get as many uh, living armors that we need to go ahead and skill up the copper. Okay, so uh, if you guys are new to the game, obviously this is going to be focused on the new players out there. Um, you know, you guys are really, really focused on the PvE progression, but ultimately you're going to be moving in to the PvP very, very soon. Why is that? You need to get those glory towers, you know, all leveled up and set up so that you can have those permanent stats in order to improve uh, your PvE as well as your PvP uh, progression, right? And, you know, there's a couple of units out there in the three-star category that I really consider top-tier units. And when I say that, I'm talking about, like, despite the fact that they are three-star, um, this is something that still, to this day, end-game players are using. And if I had to pick two particular monsters that I feel are super strong, while there are some other ones out there, this is just my personal top two, on the uh, offensive side, I really like uh, Copper, the Wind Living Upper. Um, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at that unit. And then, of course, uh, the next one when it comes to the support side is Rakuni, the Fireheart for me. Despite the fact that these are three-star monsters, they do such an exceptional job. Their kit is super strong. Really, really big fan of it. And I feel like you can get a ton of value out of it when you, uh, you know, build it up and get, you know, be able to use it, right? And so when I think about the opportunity that you guys have been given uh, this weekend, right, why not take the time to get the skill ups even even if you don't, um, you know, maybe you're not at the stage where you're working on the unit right now, I still say please take the time to get those skill ups because when we take a look at this unit's kit, you're going to be like, wow, like I can see why it's super strong. Let's go ahead and take advantage of it, right? So um, after this run right here, we're going to go ahead and take a look at Copper, uh, the Wind Living Aura, and take a look at the skill set and show you guys why it is super strong. So here we are, we got Copper, the Wind Living Armor. We're gonna use mine, uh, just as a reference here to take a look at this kit overall and talk about why it's super strong. Um, first and foremost, when it comes to uh, units in, a, in and of itself, right? Uh, ultimately, there is some kind of mechanic, some kind of skill, something about it that just makes it super overpowered. But why? the reason why I put Copper and units like Rakuni in such a top tier, such a high rank is because their kit overall, everything that they bring, not just one skill, is super strong, super viable with what you're trying to bring to the mix as far as the composition at hand. So let's take a look at this main skill real quick. The one that is like every everyone's really obviously using uh, quite a bit now. Um, I mean, they've been using it quite a bit. I'm saying that kind of silly, but this is the one that they go for, right? Thunder Strike, being able to do damage. Uh, the damage increases according to your defense, and then it ignores the target's defense if it is lower than 50% of your defense. So even though that there is this like kind of slight mechanic that you have to consider, um, you know, chances are if you're building it in a certain matter and if you're uh, pairing it with a unit that's going to be able to buff defense, you know, versus other units that are not defense scaling, you're not going to have any problem uh, making sure that you hit this threshold so that you can do some damage. Okay, and again, if you're if you're super late game, mid to late game, you already know why we understand this, but for the newer players out there, being able to have units that can ignore one aspect of the game, right, whether we're talking about HP or defense, or whatever, when you can ignore one element of mitigation, that makes it super, super strong. And the fact of the matter is, is that this is uh, the only unit that I can think of at this particular time as far as the uh, main three elements that can provide that ignore defense aspect uh, that is, and that is also defense scaling, right? So... Um, it's super great because as we continue to climb up and get new runes and whatnot, we think about all the units that we generally use or have been recommended in the Summoners or community. And the majority of them are going to be a lot of speed-based, attack-based, HP scaling-based monsters. Um, this particular one is defensive scaling. So if you were like me kind of growing up getting those runes, I collected a lot of Vampire, a lot of Will, a lot of random violent runes or even random fatal broken runes where i just got a ton of different uh runes that you know had some really good stats overall 
And, you know, it was it allowed me to get, you know, the defense that I need, the critical rate that I need, the critical damage that I need, all that goodness. And while it may not look cute when you're looking at one or two or three wounds, when you combine them all together and take a look at them and you get these kind of stats and you're like, wow, like I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked about it. You know, I'm pretty excited about it. And to be able to do that kind of damage to one unit, basically, you know, wiping out whatever unit going for it can be extremely strong, especially um, in the PvP world when it comes to like uh, Guild Wars or if you have some crazy synergized you know rta comp or you're going to try to get the first turn and take out their key unit i mean you could do a number with this um copper why do i like it is that um you can focus on it wherever you're at in the game you can focus on right the stats over sets and you can focus on making him as tanky as possible by means of defense but ultimately getting the amount uh, as much critical rate and critical damage as possible generally with certain um attack based monsters or even certain defense monsters or whatnot as you progress within the game you notice that there's a lot more value or there's a lot more effort put into speed tuning or you know synergizing your composition right and when it comes to this particular unit this is one of those that you can actually push away the speed while it is important it's nice to have a little bit of speed here the composition that you're, you're going to be recommended with this unit, which is going to be Immensity, uh, and then we got Bulldozer, and then we got Copper, um, you don't have to focus on the speed at hand um, because of the fact that Immensity is going to be able to pick one of your two units, whether it's Bulldozer or Copper, whichever one you're going to use, and resurge it, basically bring his attack bar to max so that Copper can follow through and take out the critical unit of the Go War defense or the arena defense that you're trying to go for. Um, and it's and it's really really beneficial here because again staying away from that speed element you can just put as much damage as possible and in turn still be able to mitigate a ton of damage because again his skills are based on defense here um, again why do I think uh, this particular unit is super good um, just that aspect of defensive scaling when we look at certain units in the attack realm or whatnot um, you, you'll see a lot of units that have are attack based skilled that's going to be the most common one or you see some that have attack and speed based uh, speed scaling skills or a little bit of both right um, you see a couple of units out there that have a couple of hp scaling skills uh, but then they have a random skill that has a unique mechanic to it but it's not hp scaling or something like that well this particular lineup of monsters, these living armors, all three skills are going to benefit from the defense. So you're going to be tanky, you're going to do damage. And then, of course, like I stated before, at the very beginning uh, of this kind of analogy, right, or this, this overlook here of this monster, um, you're going to have uh, a lot of different um, uh, aspects of this kit that can make it extremely viable, right? So considering what we just said, Copper, we're going to use it with Emesity, we're going to use it with Bulldozer. Emesity is going to give it the research there, and we're going to kill somebody, and that's going to be it, okay? GG, right? No, not just yet. It's not over. You still have to do the work here. Um, well, maybe Bulldozer will follow through. Bulldozer will take out a unit, and then you got two out of three units gone. Great. If you don't, what are you going to do? Well, that's what I like about Copper. Copper, uh, in combination with Bulldozer, I mean, they both have really good uh, uh, kits here, but Copper provides the skills that I personally believe really kind of set the pace, set the tone, um, and, and will allow you to essentially lock down those one to two monsters in order to, you know, get your skills back up and then do the work that you need to do. Okay, first skill, Pulverize. This one is going to be able to stun the target with one turn with a 50% chance. And then if the, if the target is under defense reduction effects, um, the attack speed is going to be decreased. Um, something about attack speed... I still to this day feel like um, for some of the newer players, uh, it is a little bit undervalued. Really got to consider all the harmful effects that are provided in this particular game. And me personally, I really am a big fan of attack speed decrease on units, especially when you think about the meta and how it's so much revolved around speed. Super, super good. So all, again, the 15% chance is low, but as you can see, we're going to have a 35% chance uh, increase here on the harmful effect rate when we get it skilled up all right so we got the we got the stun and then we got the attack speed on one skill super nice next one we have an aoe being able to decrease the defense with a 50 percent chance and that damage again like i said before it's uh, according to my defense here um, as you can see this, this is going to be every three turns which is pretty good i i believe that's right in range where it should be with the three with the three star monster here but uh, again, it is an AOE skill, right? And the defense break, which is obviously extremely important here, is going to allow you to kill your monsters really, really quickly. So, um, AOE defense break, we got the stun, we got the slow, and we got a skill that's going to be providing that ignore defense. This is why, and, and all of them, right, are defensive scaling. This is why I really, really, really uh, like this unit. 
Um, and now if you haven't seen it, I do have a Messity out there, so I'll showcase it real quick. A Messity, um, you know, we already talked about that resource. You know, Martian Shout's gonna get the defense and critical rate buffer for two turns and fill up the allies' attack bar. And then of course, combine that with the copper, providing the stuns or the slows on the unit, um, you got two particular skills that are going to be able to reduce the attack bar. So even if you take out one or two monsters and you're struggling with one more, uh, between both of those units, you're going to be able to control the fight via stuns or attack bar manipulation. That's going to really allow you to kind of catch up, get your skills back and do some damage. And I don't have my bolter out just here. So let's go ahead and go to the collection tab and we will take a look at uh, the bulldozer here. Uh, so the skill set right here. We got this uh, hammer punch. It's going to be able to stun two hits, if not three, if they're not something additional attacks here, right? For the 25% chance, which improves to a 45% chance. We got, again, that attack bar manipulation that we were talking about earlier. And then last but not least, the uh, damage is going to be able to ignore the target's defense on this one, but it will be stunned for one turn. So generally, people um, are going to go ahead and run a will set on him, uh, if at all possible, unless you have some kind of mechanic in your team that's going to allow him to cleanse. Uh, and 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 be able to you know cleanse them so he can get back or but obviously the will is going to be the easiest way to go again he's another unit that I'm going to say stats over sets and he's he's going to help out Immensity and, co and Copper control the fight so that you can uh, keep these units locked down and do the work talking about the secret dungeons that come around it's not going to be something that I do all too often uh, but I feel like this is one of those um, where I definitely would recommend you farming if you can. Um, if you can't get any, like let's say you are at the position where you're trying to get the uh, skill ups, and you, or you, let's say you want to get them, get them. But let's say um, you want to use it for the fusion, right? One thing that I forgot to mention here, the fusion uh, for the wind, what's it called? The wind origin is what I like to say. The wind vampire here um, actually needs iron, uh, the fire living armor here, to go ahead and fuse your Veramos here. So you can, you can obviously uh, get some for Veramos if you're still working on that. If you don't get it, if you don't, or if you maybe saw this video a little bit later on and you didn't get an opportunity to farm it, you can go to Faroon Castle and get your Fire Living Armor for that particular thing. But after you get one set aside for the fusion, definitely get the skill ups. I know it sounds kind of silly because, you know, it's super early in the game and uh, why waste the time and whatnot here. I think the skill ups will come and and i think the skills will be able to come but this is one of those units out there that while you're collecting those first round of defensive scaling runes that you're just not using all too much when you start to work your way into pvp and you start to see hey you know i got this monster i got that monster like what what can i do to go ahead and take out this this kind of composition i kid you not even though this might be a little bit on the slower end but if you're doing it at arena or guild wars or whatever um, it still is a very consistent team, a very successful team that, like I said before, the top end players still use to this day, guys, okay? So that's going to be it. Thank you for listening to my long-winded video. If you like more of these long-winded videos, again, smash the like button. I'll make sure to bring you guys some more down the road. Darn those stupid pain meds, all right? That's going to be it, guys. Thank you all so much for tuning in. It's your boy Childish, Childish Plays checking out. Take care, and we will see you all in the next Summoner's War video. I'm out.